You make all these proposals, gentlemen, but it is I who must accept responsibility for the final decisions. It's too much for any one man. With the utmost respect, you have not heard all our proposals. As your majesty rightly pointed out, we are fighting a war on two fronts. The Russian front must be eliminated. Do you think, Field Marshal, in the years that you were a general in the field and knew nothing of what was going on behind the scenes in the Wilhelmstrasse, that I was not conscious of that fact? We are all deeply sensible of your foresight, Majesty. With Russia out of the war, I can release 122 divisions from the east, more than doubling our strength on the Western Front and enabling us to mount a major offensive. Hey, Ludendorff, a breakthrough, complete victory. But have I not, Chancellor, again and again tried to get my cousin Nicky to sign a separate peace treaty with the Central Powers? I have personally, in writing, guaranteed that every single German soldier will be taken from Russian soil in return for a guarantee of a separate peace. Now, you, you don't know my cousin, Field Marshal. He's as stubborn as he is treacherous. With respect, Majesty, I am confident that there are other means of detaching Russia from her commitment to the Western Allies. In Russia, there are certain disruptive groups. Every week I hear the same thing. Russia is on the verge of a civil war. Her army is on the brink of mutiny. That we should try to win this war by encouraging a Bolshevik revolution in Russia is sheer insanity. If we should succeed, what then? We should have an armed Bolshevik nation on our doorstep. Out of an enemy, we would create a monster. If your Imperial Majesty will not make some decision, then an armies might well retire from the field before another drop of German blood is shed. We must either fight this war to win or sue for peace at any price. Oh, very well. But I place the responsibility for this on your shoulders, gentlemen. Very well. Admiral, you may have your unrestrained submarine warfare and the day hostilities cease on the Eastern Front, Ludendorff, you may have your complete victory. What dreadful tea this is. Where does it come from nowadays? I've always assured you, Chancellor, that should the Bolsheviks come to power, Russia will be out of the war. Quite. But they are urgently in need of organizers and political agitators. And the most experienced of these are exiled abroad, mostly in Switzerland. Then the sooner they're in Russia, the better. The only problem is how. They will not be permitted to travel through Italy or France. The Allies are not likely to encourage a Bolshevik revolution. Then they must be transported through Germany. It is the only way, Chancellor. That, too, presents certain problems. Mm -hmm. Majesty, I did not expect your... I'm majesty. sure you didn't, Bittman Holweg. And who is this? This is Dr. Helphunt, Majesty. Our principal contact with the Bolshevik revolutionaries in Russia. We were discussing means I that... am well aware of what you are discussing, Chancellor. I am not utterly without sources of information in my government. I assure your majesty there was nothing secret in our discussion. It is a matter of transporting certain revolutionaries in Switzerland across Germany into Russia, Majesty, with your Majesty's permission. Did you course. really imagine, Doctor, that we would willingly give our permission for the encouragement of a Bolshevik revolution in Russia? But uh, I had been given to understand, Majesty. We have no intention of building up a power which could one day destroy us. The Bolsheviks want only peace, Majesty. Whose terms? That must be a matter for negotiation, Majesty. <laughs> Any peace treaty will not be signed on their terms. Of that you may be assured. I am confident that they are aware of that, Your Majesty. We shall drive a very hard bargain, Doctor. 
one that even the Bolsheviks, however much they may desire peace, will find hard to swallow. Our interests in the wheat fields, the oil fields of Eastern Europe, are very ambitious. Their first consideration, Majesty, is peace. Without peace, there can be no revolution. I think you will find them willing to listen to reason. Mm. These uh, Bolsheviks in Switzerland, by all accounts, an assorted lot, are they reliable? As far as I'm concerned, there is only one man that matters. He has been planning this revolution for 30 years. He is bitterly opposed to the war, and he has the support of the Bolsheviks, who, in turn, have many supporters in the army and navy. Do you think that he will agree to this suggestion? He is in a difficult position. Open support from the German government could politically be extremely embarrassing for him. But on the other hand, he is determined to return to Russia by any means he can. And secrecy is most important. It is imperative, Chancellor. And you, Dr. Elpin, what is your interest in this, this little plot? I am a socialist, Your Majesty. I will be happy to have played any part in bringing about a socialist revolution in Russia. A revolution which you hope will then spread all across Europe? That, I fear, Majesty, is only a matter of time. <coughs> if the German military plight were not so serious, I would forbid any action of this kind. And I have Your Majesty's permission to proceed. With the greatest reluctance. I tell you, if this scheme of yours succeeds, Petr Holway, it will become something which Germany one day will live to regret. Thank <laughs> you.